Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave, and hey, happy Tuesday morning. You made it all the way to Tuesday, and my God, you're you're about halfway there if you're on a regular schedule. But you know what? If you're trading cryptocurrencies, they don't fucking sleep. So it's time to get into the uh, good old charts over here. We got GDAX, and with the essential inaction of yesterday night, um, we actually do have quite a few things to talk about. So I I, I do want to be very aware of this area right here, 6150. As long as you're above there, Bitcoin, yes, does have the chance to just go sideways over a long period of time. Perhaps the low is even in. Uh, but Again, I say that with great reservation because I think a lot of people might hear that and interpret it perhaps not the way that I intend. Um, what I'm saying is, hey, the second that you break below 6100, 6150, I become extremely, extremely bearish. But for right here, right now, as long as you're above it, you know, it's it's one of those things. You don't want to end up like someone who might be stuck in a trade for weeks and weeks and uh, also on perhaps the wrong side of the direction right now. So again, when it comes down to it, that area is very important to me. The second that you break that, I become extremely bearish. Right now, I would say uh, my opinion and technical analysis is more neutral than anything, although technical analysis does have a slight bearish twist right now. Um, but uh, but hey, we can represent both sides pretty damn well. So again, we were working on this descending triangle here for for about two to three months, right? And we actually broke it out to the upside. But again, a very, 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 very weak breakout. You know, no volume on your breakout, just not what you really want to see on a market shifting uh, type uh, event. And what happened after that? You're living below all major moving averages, essentially the yellow 21 providing the resistance all the way through. Pop back down here, retest this, and then have a reactionary bounce off of it. Um, and now we're living back above this yellow 21 exponential. So that is a small win, a small win. But hey, it's a start. It's a start. Now, yesterday we had the we had the classic play, you know, where you where you bust back above the 21 and then you just rebuy the uh, the test of it. So. So if Bitcoin does fail to kind of take off from here, I would be very, 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 very apprehensive. Now, the altcoins in this market do look like they want to rally, so we'll cover a few of those. Um, and that can be a leading indicator for Bitcoin, but really what Bitcoin looks like it wants to do right here is just kind of uh, <laughs> just kind of go sideways uh, in this range right here. So again, you can even just see the range in these uh, in these exponential moving averages, the 21 and the 55 right here. So it's about, you know, 63.80ish um, area, 63.60 to 6460. So again, you know, we've been talking about this, we've been talking about these ranges for quite some time, but overall this reaction off the retest of this, uh, you know, if you want to call it a broken resistance, you could, um, is, you know, it's a very, 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 very low volume, but you are taking out a level now. Is it an important level? Well, I mean, in, in the in the hierarchy of levels, not so much. The wall of worry is quite high at the current moment, but uh, but hey, we can kind of map off some 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 areas to be aware of. So hey, as long as you're above 63.60 and holding that area as support, um, you know, well, perhaps you're. I think that you're likely to get another test of this resistance right here that we tested a couple of day, a couple of nights ago around 64.60. By the same token, if you were to break below 63.60, don't really see much holding you up from this area right here, 62.50. And if that area were, were to break, then 61.50 is the next kind of area of major support. Again, that is the massive, massive area. You know, the red, the red alert area. Um, so overall, you know, we we basically been trading this trade for the last like what couple of weeks. Uh, we caught this trade. Um, we caught this trade on the downside over here, breaking through uh, 64, 60 right here, and then all the way down to 62, or sorry, 6150, or in some in some cases, wicking all the way down to uh, 6,000. Um, then we kind of filled out this range over here, then broke this down right right again around here, 6360, and then the, your next trade, you know, was 62, uh, what was it, 6250. Then you just buy it back again, and you bust through this resistance, and we caught this one as well, where you go all the way to your next one at 6460. So this is just straight up range trading, which I absolutely love. It's very very straightforward, very very easy, um, and uh, and while I think it frustrates a lot of the a lot of the moon boys and all that kind of shit, it's it's it can be extremely profitable as well um just by understanding that you know you're not looking for the biggest fucking move of all time you're just looking for a move a tradable event and and so you're basically presented with the same thing right here as we are struggling to hold the 200 exponential on the four hour dildo chart right over here but hey the next thing that happens whether you break 6360 or 6460 that's the next trade to be taken in my opinion now if you do break 6450 things do become a lot more interesting because your next resistance would be right around here 6630 ish area now why is that interesting well i'm glad you asked 
podcast because <laughs> let's go over, on over here. Just having a conversation with myself. It sounds absolutely amazing. I'm sure my neighbors are so proud of me. Um, but hey, you got this area over here, this overall downturn resistance line that we've been living under for the last 11 months. And that would be uh, that would be meeting current price action right around 6640-ish area, the, uh, the area that we just kind of mapped off, uh, 6640, 6650. Um, so if you were to break above there, you would actually have a change of behavior just by the definition of it, right? Because if you've been living under for the last something if you've been living under if you've been living under a fucking rock like me and you have a hairstyle like me then you probably do live under a rock but um but you know if, if you if you break out of something that you've been living under for the last 11 months yes you have done something different you have a change behavior in the most basic definitions of it now of course the as we just stated the wall of worry is quite high um but you know with each and every hurdle passed it does become more and more likely that the, that the low could be in so again i need to be extremely adamant in how i relate these concepts because I'm not saying that the lows in. I'm saying that with each and every hurdle passed on this wall of worry is uh, is kind of how I I become more and more um, what's it called confident confident in that idea. Uh, for right here right now, you are actually closer to the <laughs> if this is the wall of worry going up, then what's this like the the pit the the downfall of doom down uh, down around here? Yeah, if you do, you're you're closer to the downfall of doom trigger below sixty one fifty for now. But hey, Bitcoin fighting it off. Um, and, uh, and I know a lot of people are calling this either a falling wedge if you're bullish or they're calling it a, uh, a descending triangle if you're bearish. Um, I think it's neither. I think that you have something new going on. The volume catchers over here are, are indicative that, uh, that, that we're not necessarily playing out a descending triangle or a, or a falling wedge. I think that we're quite literally just making a new formation. We need to just give it time to tell us what it wants to do. Again, just listen to the charts. Just put your ears up and say, hello, hello, please charts. Would you please tell me what fucking direction you're going to go soon? Or maybe we could just uh, have have any direction. I don't care what direction you pick. I'm not a direction racist, but I do love directions just <laughs> when it comes down to it. So overall, uh, we got Buterol rallying over here. Wow, I just uh, saw it take up uh, up a buck. Nice, not bad. Um, but overall, hey, you know, the wall of worry, let's kind of just plot out some, some points. Um, you know, if you could get above 66.50, uh, that'd be pretty impressive. Uh, your next area would be right around here, which is also your 200 exponential and 200 simple, but some good historical, uh, some good historical relevancy from this area as well. Then, of course, you know, making a higher high above 7400 would be pretty damn impressive. Making a higher high above this guy right here at about 8400 would be extremely impressive, and 10,000 would be like kind of the last of the Mohicans for me. So again, with each and every hurdle passed, it becomes more and more likely. And now it just looks like a fucking checkers board over here. Um, it becomes more and more likely that. Uh, that the low is actually in. However, again, to be very, 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 very adamantly clear, I want to be. I'd like to be very adamantly clear about this. You know, until you actually, until you actually close above all these, you know, it's it's still always going to be a possibility in the back of the mind that 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 you could, you know, pop back down around here. But hey, for now, you know, you're holding above it. So hey, there's no reason to be. Again, there's no reason to have like a super bearish trade on. Cough, cough. You know who I'm talking about. Um, but again, that's the difference between an analyst and a trader. You know, I could see the same thing and I'd be like, yeah, you know, it, it doesn't look, doesn't look like the hottest chart of all time, but, uh, do I want to take a short off that? Fuck. No, I don't. I need to see confirmation first instead. Um, instead it looks like it, if we can get this 21 exponential to really like start to, uh, gain momentum to the upside and, and use this as support, that will look good. That will look good. If, if Bitcoin can close today's daily dodo above 6460, that would look pretty damn good to me. And, and I, and you know, this is, I'm, I'm actually speaking out of turn here because I'm giving in my opinion rather than the technical analysis but hey, my opinion would be hey if you do see today's daily dollar close significantly above 6460 obviously it's pretty far away right now but uh that would be uh that would be a first big signal in my opinion that would be a first big signal but again that's i'm just speaking off to, i'm just speaking off hand here um Okay, cool. So let's go over here to the total market cap. Again, I don't really care too much about the total market cap, but we do have something interesting over here. We are breaking out now and uh, the volume on it, while still not necessarily breakout volume, it is interesting. It, it, it is, it, it's, I mean, it's kind of relatively high. It's, it's not, you know, we do have, you can't, you can't argue with this price action just yet. Um, but again, is it, is it picture perfect? No, absolutely not. Uh, if we were to make a measure move off this uh, break over here, it'd be pointing us all the way to about uh, 250 billion. Um, which would be a nice horizontal coming in from this area right over here. So I do like that for good confluence. Uh, but again, you know, 
a lot, you know, it's still questionable. I really want to see that slap in the face uh, signal that, hey, we're going, you know, it's, we got, we got some good, uh, we got some good, um, what's it called? Agreement in the market, some good conviction in the market that we want to go up in instead. You know, the, the, the possibility for trap always remains uh, until you actually for, uh, formally have that. Over here, we have, um, you know, if you were to break it out to the downside, if you did get a trap um, area, uh, then yeah, 150 billion would be kind of the measure move off this baby. But for right here, right now, going up and uh, RSI is, not necessarily in the bullish zone just yet. Uh, stochastics are quite up there and hinting at a loss of momentum. So that does make me a little bit apprehensive. But um, but hey, for right here, right now, I'm just going to go with the price action and say, okay, well, if Bitcoin can take a, take a step up, this is going to start to look a lot. It's going to really start to change a lot of the uh, a lot of the uh, the macro directions. Um, you know, one by one. Uh, speaking of over here, uh, we got Bitfinex longs uh, on Bitcoins, and we have about 20, a little bit over 24,000 open longs. Um, so again, you know, while people are putting on longs, while people are getting interested in price action down around here, um, uh, bulls still have plenty of dry ammo to go and drive if they, if they do so desire uh, going all the, you know, again, uh, I consider like, I consider it kind of top heavy when it's above about 33,000. Why is this going weird right now? Strange. Um, and then it's uh, same thing for shorts or perhaps a little bit different for shorts. What's going on over here? Why is my thing all different now? That's so weird. Um, <laughs> but basically, yeah, you know, uh, 21 and a half thousand open shorts right now. So, so shorts have just jumped on off a fucking cliff, losing more than 10,000 open shorts over the last uh, week or so. So we have been losing shorts while Bitcoin essentially remains stagnant, which to me is not the best sign. Um, so, hey, I do have to offer up counterpoints. And we've been talking about all bullish things throughout this whole um, throughout this whole stream. But you know what? Let's 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 just talk a little bit about the bears. Let's give the bears some their, their due credence. Okay, what would we say uh, if we're looking if we're looking at this from a bearish point of view? Well, I'd be looking at this and I'd be saying, hey, um, well, the daily, I mean, the daily you're living below the 200 simple and 200 exponential, so it's going to take a while to, to kind of get to get above those. But hey, you are actually, you know, changing things around on the uh, on, on the very uh, small um, lower period uh, uh, moving averages over there. Uh, two day over here still got the two day dildo death cross over here still being held below this uh, this 21 exponential right over here. Again, we only have one example of of, of Bitcoin. Bitcoin even getting the two-day dildo death cross in Bitcoin's almost 10-year history. That was right over here in good old 2014. Um, very similar price action as well. You know, you came back and tested this area, and then you spent a lot of time going sideways along this yellow 21 exponential right here. Um, you actually spent, you know, this started about middle of November, and you really started descending um, in middle of December. So it took about a month. So again, um, you know, after this test over here, we it actually, it will be a month uh, in about a week. So Again, I'm not saying that that happens in a one-to-one -one time frame. No, absolutely fucking not. And I really dislike it, or I shouldn't say I dislike it, but I think it's very misleading when people, when other uh, analysts on crypto Twitter and other great, amazing social media venues um, put that kind of shit up. But uh, but hey, um, you know, it does it does offer us something to go off of when it comes to what are we respecting for now. Um, so again, I wouldn't analyze it like one to one, but I would say, hey, as long as you're below this 21, it is still, you know, you you have you really haven't changed too much. Uh, same thing with the three day over here, the three day closing, uh, both opening and closing, not just closing, but both opening and closing. One, two, three, four, five, and now working on a six dildo below the red 200 simple moving average. Which again, the last time we've ever done that in Bitcoin's almost 10 year history was right over here in 2014. Once it got above it, this red line again. Um didn't end so well and uh, you'll notice that the purple line as well you know once once price action got below that that was uh, quite nasty indeed in fact i'd say the purple line is much more important which funnily enough or perhaps not funnily enough um bitcoin is actually still fighting off uh you have not both opened and closed a three-day dildo above or sorry below this purple 200 exponential um ever since 2014 we haven't done it in 20, 2018 at all um so again just offering up counterpoints over here to my counterpoints but uh but as you can see it gets you know gets complicated this is why this range right here i don't believe it's appropriate to really be bullish or bearish i think it's appropriate to be bullish and essentially neutral which is why i fucking love options and i always fucking forget to talk about my own shit but <laughs> if you're interested in the options program yes it is fully live been getting a lot of questions about this so i should probably just say this in this video um there is a there there is a discounted period for the first month um for with the code uh, in all capitals bf20 uh that is bf20 just the letter b and then the letter f and then two zero um 
So again, uh, if you're interested in that, definitely go check that out. The link's in the description of this video. You can also hit me up on Discord if you're, you know, if you're curious, if you're not, if you're not really sure what it's all about, um, definitely hit me up. So anyways, I will get off that and let's go back on over uh, into the charts. Let's go to the weekly over here. So weekly still has a pretty nasty cross right here. And weekly, when we do throw on the 10 simple moving average, you're going to notice that Bitcoin has still not done anything different over here. No change of behavior, no, no nothing. Um, the 21 exponential, this yellow line in the, in the green 55 exponential, are actually still gaining momentum away from each other, which is which is very damning in my opinion, um, especially as you use this 10 simple as resistance. I mean, this is kind of like, this is a setup right here is what it looks like to me. Um, overall, people are calling it last week's, uh, last week's dildo a, you know, a hammer of some sorts. No, it's not. You need to have it at the bottom of, an, uh, of a downtrend and I need to see major volume on it. We don't have either of those things. We also don't have continuation. So that is a, that is just silliness. Um, over here though, the, the only other time you've ever even had that exponential moving average cross right over here. And again, very similar price action where you're going sideways for quite some time. And and then boom down get your red get your red blood eagle on because god damn it girl you are going all the way down to this very nasty number which who cares about the number but we do care about percentages and that'd be about a six percent drop 60 percent drop i should say so from about here that'd be you know i don't know like below three thousand or some shit um just doing a little bit of mental math shouldn't shouldn't say some shit that that makes me sound uneducated which maybe i am but i went to a very good university <laughs> <laughs> where I did not give a fuck about anything that was being taught. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, okay, go over into the 12 hour right here. Um, 12 hour putting in a cup, a pair of to doji dildos right here so far, but still got, got about a five hours and uh, 24 minutes to go. I mean, is this a doji dildo right here? No, it's not. You know, you need more of a wick to the upside, but I understand that. Um, but, um, but overall, you know, it, I don't, uh, it does feel a little bit heavy, but let's go look at the alts because the alts are not looking heavy at all. In fact, looking at XRP over here, it's doing exactly what we, th what we thought it might do. Um, and essentially rallying. We said that it looked, you know, we, we looked at it yesterday. A lot of people were bringing this up during the live stream yesterday. And I said, you yeah, know, it looks, uh, looks good to me. So, Hey, if you're taking those trades yesterday, well, fucking well done. Um, again, though, still not officially broken out. This is not breakout volume down here, still consolidation airy ish volume, but, uh, but Hey, a good enough for a trade. Again, I think a lot of people caught this uh, the other day when we called it out somewhere right around about 46 and a half cents. Um, by the same token, it's not really until you break out above about 58 cents where you, I can get extremely excited about this thing. By the same token, if you break down below about 38 cents, that would be a very, 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 very bad. Um, so yeah, uh, let's go check out Dixie really quick. What is Mr. Dixie doing? Uh, let's go. I need to get on the actual Dixie itself. Uh, TVC. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So, uh, so, so yesterday actually, Doing exactly what I did not want it to do. Um, again, bearish divergence on the daily. Pretty hefty bearish divergence on the daily. Uh, the only way that I can really get excited about this guy once again is if you is to, is if you start closing daily dollars above about ninety or ninety seven dollars and uh, sixteen cents. If you can do that, then yeah, it's also look good. But for right here, right now, I think that you might see a lot of this uh, bearish divergence pay, play out um, on this daily here. Now, is it is it a death sentence? No, not necessarily. But the second that you do start closing daily dollars below ninety six oh five, this twenty one right here, not the best look on it. Probably probably would come back down into this region right here about 95 and a half dollars um again stock market is going to be having some uh, stock market and dixie and all this kind of shit is going to be having some very interesting stuff going on um just because when it comes down to it you know they you know elections will kind of run things because that actually would be uh, in theory a th uh, fundamental change i know that there's like crypto anarchists out there he's gonna be like they're all the same well yeah i kind of agree with that too but when it comes to monetary policies and taxes and whatnot there are there are enough differences to cause a a big a big shake up in the uh in the stock market so again that's what we're looking at over there um do be careful of that because uh it does it, it does look to me like kind of wants to come lower uh lower time frames over here um you know, well, eh, the low four hour over here doesn't look as bad to me actually. Uh, four hour over here actually looks okay, um, but again, you know, the, the 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 major levels still stand. The major levels still stand. Let's go check out GBTC. GBTC actually doing something interesting as well. Um, basically putting in uh, perhaps an uh, I mean, well, it's not really an island bottom down here, but but having a gap up and then closing the day above the yellow twenty minute exponential. We have not done that in you know in months. Uh, quite literally months. Um, so that is very interesting to me. Again, not enough volume to be super convincing, but it is a start. It is a start. I still need to see my horizontals get taken out. First things first, seven dollars and thirty-three and a half cents, and I'd become a lot more confident above about eight dollars and uh, 
and five cents or whatever it might be just kind of clearing up my eyes because I just woke up and my God, I actually got a really good night's sleep last night. So I'm feeling good. Um, but, uh, but Hey, that's what I'd be looking at over here. Again, GBTC, a leading indicator for Bitcoin, but will it matter if Bitcoin gets an ETF or backed or, or, or any of these other, uh, more regulated type, uh, type venues? Um, I would argue it's probably going to be out the window. So perhaps that, perhaps that would be a counterpoint to this, to, to looking at this, to be a major, um, a major, uh, leading indicator for Bitcoin itself. Let's go check out SPY. SPY is closing the day up. Again, we spoke about this, uh, coming into this week that spot, you know, regular markets are likely to kind of be i mean maybe slightly up this week but i'd say more more than anything being a range uh the range being about you know 279 ish high and uh and, and where we currently are right now so finding support along this area right here i do like that um overall you know, higher time, like higher, higher time frames, like a monthly, I am, I am bearish on this. You have significant bearish divergence on this guy over here. Um, so, you know, it, but it's also a month. It could take, could take a very long time to play out. Uh, daily over here, uh, I'm going to be testing the 200 exponential uh, pretty soon. Again, it looks like, um, can it pop back above? If it does, I'd, I'd say 279 is where you're likely looking at. By the same token, if you do lose 269 support, this will, this will look a lot more nasty, but I don't, I don't necessarily think that you're going to do that just right here right now i think that this week's probably going to be a uh, like a bounce or or small range uh slightly to the upside week is is what i'm really looking for so let's go check out mr Beaterell. how's mr Beaterell doing over here still working on this uh, symmetrical triangle is what it looks like to me um I'm going to be testing the upside of it pretty soon or right now, really. Uh, so if we can close today's daily above about, uh, what is it, about 2, let's call it 211. Yeah, if you can close today's daily above 211, this is going to start to look pretty good. Um, or at least it will look like a break. Now, I need to see breakout volume as well. Uh, we didn't quite get it over here. Um, so what happens is well, you just redraw it and get ready to go again. If you do break it out to the upside, well, where would you be pointing towards on a measure move? About 270-ish area. By the same token, you know, as long as you're still within it, um, can still break it out to the downside, which would actually point you down towards about 130-ish area. So again, um, a little bit of patience here will go a long way. But uh, but overall, Mr. Buterol is is looking is looking a little bit better to me. I want to go over to the Finex Buterol and see what he's doing because uh, sometimes they disagree with each other. But uh, but yeah, we do have something new going on over here. You know, just, again, just looking at my exponentials over here, you know, we, yes, we put in a symmetrical triangle over here, but we never got above any sort of major levels. Over here, we we are getting above these guys right now, and we are using as, them as support. So to me, this is typically a buy. This is typically a sign. And when you are at the edge of a, uh, and when you are at the edge of a, um, oops, I guess we draw it like this. When you are at the edge of a formation like this, uh, that usually leads to the domino effect. So I, so again, you know, I'd actually, I'd actually be, my opinion is that this likely breaks up. Again, am I taking a position right now? Well, I won't take a position right now, but I'll be happy to buy it once it confirms itself, you know, with like a two hour, four hour dildo close above about two, 13 and a half on Finex if you're, if you're using Finex. Um, but overall, uh, that that could lead to the domino effect in the market, right? Because uh, Bitcoin and and Mr. Buterell do typically trade similarly to each other. Um, so again, you know, one 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 follows the other. When you know they play follow the leader all goddamn day long. Um, so again, you know, this this these are very interesting things to me because this would really start to heighten the probability of Bitcoin actually being able to go sideways and perhaps even up from here, uh, which would be quite, uh, well, it would make my life a lot easier. So fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, get on over here to uh, to to uh, to and wrap it up with uh, with BitMexico and just kind of talk about these levels one more time. So again, uh, the 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 level to the upside to be aware of is sixty four sixty. If you take a trade, if if Bitcoin does break back above there, um, don't really see much stopping you from this level right over here, which is around sixty six twenty ish area, sixty six thirty, which would be the place where it actually starts to meet that overall downturn resistance line. So that becomes a very big area of interest. Um, when it comes to climbing the wall of worry, if you can climb above there, well, things start to look a little bit more rosy. Um, by the same token, if you do break back below, if you get some sort of a, uh, uh, a hunt, uh, some sort of a bull, a bull hunt or what the <laughs> bull trap, sorry, that's the word that I'm looking for and, uh, get shoved right back below 6360. Yeah, it would, it would look pretty damn bad, but again, still not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world in my opinion, until you start breaking back below about 6,100, 6,150 on heavy volume. Again, major, major volume I need to see on these and above there, you'd still have this, uh, 6,250 support to deal with. So overall, I need to see those areas be absolutely smashed, whichever one that it is. And I'm happy to go on it until then. I'm still just, still just looking for rain to still just trading ranges, you know, break out above here, then 
you know, then, then you got this next area over here. You know, it's very, very easy, easy on the soul. And it's been really the best way to be trading for the last uh, month and a month or two if you're if you're only trading Bitcoin. Um, so again, you know, that's going to do it for today. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you on this lovely Tuesday. Yes, have have the greatest rest of your Tuesday. I have a chicken in the in the oven right now, so I'm really excited about that. And <laughs> And I'm actually off coffee right now, so I will be getting some more coffee soon, which I'm also excited about. Anyways, guys, hope you have a great one, and I'll see you in a live stream near you soon. Take care.